I've been working with Backyard Brains in the classroom for probably the last six years. The one thing I've really enjoyed uh, in that time is that every year I feel like there are new experiments that are being released that they help to facilitate that we can bring immediately to the classroom. I was shocked at, when I started teaching the IB program about how little experience the students actually had with designing their own investigations. These tools that we have through Backyard Brains allow them to really go in so many different directions for designing experiments on their own. They have so many ideas that they can come up with just by seeing some basic demonstrations. And it really builds those skills where the students are able to actually design what they want to investigate and then have the ability to explain it based on the results they can collect. One thing that we did in my class last year is we kind of opened up uh, almost a full week of students to be able to explore some of the different pieces of equipment that we have from Backyard Brains. And one of the most creative experiments I saw was using the, the spiker box where the students were using this along with the reaction timer. And we did a, a collaborative project with the AP Stats students. So the biology students were able to help design the experiment and explain what was actually being measured. The AP Stats students then collected data uh, for both auditory and visual stimuli. And then using the data, they were able to answer questions like, do boys or girls have faster reaction times? Or do left-handed people or right-handed people have faster reaction times? And then using some of the statistics behind it, uh, we're able to then present that data and say kind of definitively, you know, at least the populations that we're looking at in our class, you know, what the answer was. So it was, it was really cool. One of the things that my students have enjoyed the most about working with these tools is that it allows them to investigate an area that usually only gets one or two pages maybe in a, in a typical textbook. I mean, the idea of how our brain works is fascinating to all people, but especially students whose brains are still actively developing. So for them to actually see the basic biology and the basic neurology that goes into you know, what is taking place at a cellular level, uh, it, it just makes it that much more enticing for the students to want to do investigations to learn more about it. So it's, it's allowed that on-ramp for them to investigate some basic neurobiology really, really easy. They'll learn how to use the kit. Um, they'll look at what is being generated, the data they can collect. We'll have some good conversations about uh, what they're actually viewing. And then from there, we use the kit to, and the data from the kit to discuss what action potentials are. And then they go back and design some of their own experiments uh, where they're looking at how they can you know, manipulate the frequency of or the uh, intensity of the action potentials. I think the number one piece of advice I'll give teachers who are considering using some of the backyard brains materials is that they just have to do it. Uh, the, the materials are incredibly affordable. You can use them as both demonstration materials as well as, as class sets of investigation tools. But I've never seen students more engaged in the content than I do when they're looking at some of the neurobiology work that we do with the backyard brains materials. The customer support that we get from the company has been phenomenal. So there's questions that we can ask that we're not sure about. We'll get responses within an hour, oftentimes letting us know like what things we can do or modify. But the, the work that the students are doing is really creative. If, if you're looking at a way to really incorporate more investigations in your classroom with a content area that the students are highly engaged in, I can't think of a better group to work with.